Dolphins are happy with the running back room. We came to that conclusion yesterday. They're very deep at running back, and they don't need Delvin Cook. And what? What? Did you say Jonathan Taylor's available? Uh Okay. All bets are off. We don't don't care about Raheem Mostert anyway. (laughs) We've said it before. If you can upgrade, you upgrade. That that's a significant upgrade, right? Yes. I mean, Dalvin Cook, while a great running, Jonathan Taylor, top three, right? Mm-hmm. Top three in the NFL in the world, Hawk. In the let's world. be honest, yes, and young too. Yeah, young. He's what twenty four? Like yeah. you got years left in him. So that that would be appealing, right? Jonathan Taylor would be appealing. A hundred percent till he asks for fifteen million dollars a year for five years, and now your salary cap is well, shot. Okay, well that that's so at what point is he not appealing? You don't mind giving up a first round pick? No. You're, Kalani, you're, you mind giving around giving up a first round ooh. pick? No, but man, I, I, on the way in, Tobin was making such a great point. The Colts don't value him enough to pay him, but we're supposed to send valuable assets for him. Well, it's one of the it's, it's one of the great contradictions of what they've done during this offseason. A lot of people were pointing that out on social media. It's a great contradiction. Running backs aren't worth over X and we're not going to pay him over X. But if anyone is interested, he's more valuable than anyone that's hit the free agent market in, in your uh, recent memory. So, yeah. yeah, but I mean, that's what you do when you have an asset. I mean. But people do that all the time with their own employees, right? Well, you're not worth this much. Oh, I have an offer over there for that much. You know, we've been thinking about it. You are worth that much. I mean, that's <laughs> that's the way that it works. But but would you give up a first round draft pick and then also give him a lot of money over a number of years? The the first round draft pick is not the biggest issue for me. It's the money. It's that he's going to want $80 million for six years or something crazy like that. And then now you shoot your salary cap, protecting Tua, you know, all that stuff. But I would say if you can get a, a guy, and they were talking about this on first take this morning, but get up one of them damn shows. I was watching it on the plane. If you can add him to a team that's already established, now you add the third top three running back in the world, that puts you over the edge. So – and you know what? It gets back to a conversation we have a number of times. What the Rams did a couple of years ago when they went out and gave up all them picks and the whole the whole hashtag was F them picks. F them picks. Go get you a Super Bowl real quick and you're going to be terrible for the next four years. Like the Rams that were terrible last year. Would you trade that out? And I believe both of y'all said yes. I would. And, and I would go get Jonathan Taylor and I'd sign him for whatever he wants. And then when it comes time to pay the piper, meaning – Either you're getting rid of players that you don't want to get rid of because you got to get under the cap or you're renegotiating, whatever. You deal with it then. But if you have a chance to put Tyreek Hill out on the field with Jalen Waddell and then in the backfield, you've got Jonathan Taylor. What? I mean, what? Come on. Solana, any any opposite side to that? Not at all. Not at all. I I happen to think window is open now yes don't expect the window to be there two years from now window is open now you can put that i like the shiny toy go get the shiny toy no but to your point Solana, in two years Jalen phillips is going to need a contract Jalen waddle would need one in one year you know what i'm saying it's going to be a bundle of work. i don't think xavier howard is here after next year oh uh, Jalen ramsey is going to be your number one uh, Javon Holland's going to want money. Brandon Jones is going to. Let's not be naive now. No, Igbenogany will be uh, due for his. Uh... If oh. I was in South Florida, I'd drive to your oh. house during the break and smack oh. you in the head. Around the world, <laughs> around the world. The window. Speaking about that window, it's exactly what the Rams did a couple years ago. F them picks. We have an okay team. We make our team great. We get a ring. And then we're going to deal with it. Like you say, Hawk, we're going to deal with it when it comes up. Did you see, I, I can't remember who I saw had tweeted it. Um, they asked Raheem Mostert about him. You can't ask the coaches because that would be tampering. Yeah. And so someone, I think it was Joe Shad, asked, what's the running back coach name? Studesville? Yes. Studesville. Yeah. Um, they, they asked him. You know, just about, I think, Jonathan Taylor, not about acquiring him, just about him. 
But someone asked Raheem Mostert about it, and and he said, "I'm not worried about." I I'll find the exact quote somewhere. But I, it was somewhere I have it here. Do you I have, have it? it what, what did yeah. he say? I'm not worried about another man coming in. I'm worried about perfecting my craft. Cameron Wolf. This is where I'm uh, getting it from. He tweeted, and then he also added that Mostert said he wouldn't ask McDaniel or Chris Greer about potential running back moves, but noted McDaniel gave him a heads up last year on a running back that they brought in and assumes he would tell him if things got close. So, you know, I, I, I and that's a, to me, a terrific answer from him. Like, yeah, they bring someone, I'm just worried about getting better. And if they bring someone in, I'm sure they'll give me a heads up. And it's one of those things where, I think even if you're Raheem Mostert, you kind of have to acknowledge, well, if they have a chance to get Jonathan Taylor, like I can't blame them for doing that, right? Yes. And at running back, it's 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 very Belichickian, this thought. Control what you can control. Like, I'm the running back of this team now. If they add somebody, take somebody out, like, what can I do about that? That's their decision. I'm gonna just become the best player I can be. My only thought would be when they brought in Carlos Dansby. It's one time that they had a conversation with me and they were like, hey, we're about to sign, you know, Dansby. And Dansby was a monster out in Arizona. And my thought was like, oh, I'd, I'd love to play next to a guy like that. Running back's different because it's one guy on the field at a time. As a linebacker, you bring in another linebacker. Oh, damn, that's going to take some pressure off of me. That so makes it easier on me. It really does. Where now he's the center of attention and, I, you know, I can make more plays. But, yeah, as a player, the be- a lot of guys get in their emotions about it. But the best way to approach it is, control what I can control. Let me become the best player I can be. The hell with what the front office does, to be honest. It's a 305. Dale. 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 Thank you, Jimmy. Wherever You're welcome, you mother. Oh, he's there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll try it again. Thank you, Jimmy. You're welcome, mother. <laughs> Doesn't sound like he's that. <laughs> 305 brought to you by All Year Cooling. Keep your cool and call All Year, 833 All Year. Let's get headlines here with Alejandro Solana. They're driven by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford, we know trucks. Uh, I saw Bet Online put out their odds for. Uh, you know, most likely landing spot if Jonathan the Taylor Dolphins. were and traded. That's, that's like, I mean, everyone seems to be thinking that that's almost like written in stone. He wants out. If the Dolphins come up with the right package, it's a done deal. Who's the next closest behind the Dolphins? <sighs> Let me guess. I'm- Cowboys. It is not the Cowboys. The Cowboys are on this list, but they're sixth hmm. on the list. Buffalo. They're third on this list. Mm. I think Zach Gelb, I think he had the Eagles. I think he had Dolphins, Eagles, Bills as his top three landing spots. Number two on this list. The Eagles are there, but they have the longest odds of the, I think, 10 teams listed at 20 to 1. So the Dolphins are 2 to 1. The Chicago Bears Mm. are 5 to 2, plus 250 odds as the second favorite to land Jonathan Taylor in a trade. I know he'd rather be here. <laughs> it makes sense, though. Running back, protect your young quarterback, you know. Yep. Yeah, that would be the thought. Honestly, any young quarterback. Bring Jonathan Taylor in, your young quarterback. Indy, Carolina, all these young guys. I mean, you Houston. freeze a defense for a quarter second and give your quarterback a little bit more time can probably change uh, a, a, a large number of plays. Right? I mean, just the threat of having Jonathan Taylor back there. And and you pull extra defenders in the box, so now your young quarterback has one-on-ones on on the outside. That would be my thought. It would be a team with a young quarterback. You bring in a great running back to help him. Because you got to have two safeties up top if you have Tyreek and Waddle on the other side. Right, Crowder? Now Mm -hmm. you have two safeties up top. You have Jonathan Taylor as a threat in the backfield. Whew. (laughs) You know what? It's the reason why I think the Dolphins don't covet big money running backs. We put so much money into receivers. We're going to have a light box where there's not going to be a lot of people in the box where you have to double team those two guys. So, hell, you bring those guys up. Now there's one-on-ones. You can't go one-on-ones outside. So our running backs, like Raheem Mostert, hell, what do you have, 900 yards last year? Like serviceable. Between all the running backs, it was well over 1,000. 
So, yeah, Jonathan Taylor, Dolphins, keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it. <laughs> don't put no money on it, Hawk, please. Oh, we'll keep an eye on it. Just don't put no money on it. Just keeping an eye on it. I don't know why we're talking like tomorrow. Why brothers. are we talking like this? <laughs> hey, take it easy over there, take right? It take easy, it easy. Keep an eye on it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm on season six of The Sopranos. It's just wearing off on me a little bit. Great series. So good, man. I think I told you guys. I can't believe I waited this long. Twenty nine years of life to watch that how long it's been since uh oh that how, how I'm long 29 right when did the when did sopranos come out late, do you think late 90s i'd say like 98 maybe okay. 97 and i think the final season was like 04 05 somewhere around there and still holds up in my opinion best show i've ever seen other than wow. game of thrones the first six seasons of game of thrones best se- be- best series i've ever watched dragons <laughs> You know how I, I've never seen it because I don't like dragons, but it is funny to just say dragons. You have a dragon and you can't win a battle. There's a dragon. Right. W- well, you're going up against the dead. But you have a dragon. But they have a dragon too, a dead dragon. Well, I'm going to go with the live dragon every time. No. Got to be a little decrepit. Rig- rigor mortis is kicking in. He can't be that quick. OJ McDuffie tweeted out today. He is in the middle of watching Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. And it is his favorite show ever. Eh. And so he said, what is your favorite show? So I said, there's no better show in television history than The Office. And specifically the Robert California episodes. But regardless, there is no better show in television history than The Office. And he's like, he tweeted back at me and he's like, it depends what kind of, you know, show you're in the mood for. And then I said, my second favorite is Air Disasters on the Smithsonian Channel. And he said, that's a wide variety <laughs> that you just listed as one, too. But... <laughs> <laughs> I can't just... stop watching this show again. <laughs> what happened was I had, when I had moved into the apartment, I got a lesser Comcast package than what I had. Remember, I had uh, Hotwire for like the last year in my house. Mm-hmm. And they were giving me everything. So I got a lesser package. And then I realized uh, just a couple of weeks ago that it didn't come with NFL Network because now I'm starting to, you know, I want to watch NFL Network. Didn't have it. So I had to upgrade the, the level. And all of a sudden I got Smithsonian Channel back, which is the, the network that airs air disasters. I mean, all night till the wee hours of the morning. It's all they air. <laughs> and you love it. I love it. It's weird. I just... Fred Taylor loves shows like he just loves watching shows. Yeah. But he pulls you to the side like it's a deep conversation. <laughs> hey, Chan. Hold up, Freddie. Have you seen Lioness on Apple Hulu Plus? I say, I don't even know what that is. Well, Zoe Salani's in there and some Canadian lady. One of the best guessing, shows I've ever seen. I'm guessing that was Zoe Saldana. And he, Zoe 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 or, yeah. something he brings, but he just brings up stuff, but he says it's so serious that, you know, you me. feel like I, it's kind of important to check it out then. But now I have to argue, Fred, right. I ain't watching none of that crap, man. I got kids. You got time. No, I got kids. You got time. And we just go back and forth. It's my new, it's my new favorite thing in the world. <laughs> That's your new show. <laughs> it's, it's a conversation with Fred. Yes. See, they have to infiltrate. <laughs> the Taliban as women. I got it through Lioness. I kind of understood it was women, Fred. Leave me alone. Well, you said man. that's Hulu, Apple TV Plus. I don't know what he yeah. talks about. All right. Watch it on your Nest. <laughs> I don't have Nest here. <laughs>